Podcast Lesson 2-2 Logic, Some Clarification The main points of the lesson Taking a statement, a true statement, like all roses are flowers, consider it in conditional format so that we can separate the two parts, the hypothesis and the conclusion. Creating a Venn diagram is to always take the conclusion as the larger set and the hypothesis as the subset only can occur if the original is a true statement. In more complex situations we could have several sets and these sets could have different ideas such as say people, children in a school, running around about their business uh, perhaps they belong, or, or they take an algebra course, they take a biology, they take a chemistry, maybe they take both, maybe they take all three. And how do we categorize them and put them where they belong? That is, all the algebra people belong in one set. If you take algebra and biology, you would be here. And all those in chemistry down here, so trying to separate them by this idea. Can you read a description of this? and recreate this type of situation. Challenging. One of the homework questions. Check out the PowerPoint for perhaps a little more clarification as to how. It's a lot easier with dots and labels, but can you do it with words? So here's an example of all of them separated. Of course, I need you to be able to look at this Venn diagram and think not dots, but five people take algebra, four people take biology, and not other subjects. Three take algebra and biology, two of them take all three, maybe three people here, three more here, four here. How many people are in the school? How many people take all three? They take both combinations. This is the kind of situation we want to try to recreate. There's an example in the classwork file and in the homework file, and don't forget to look at the PowerPoint. Next, looking at the validity of sentences, whether it's true or false. If we have a conditional statement that's true, and let's assume this is true, if it's a cow, then it eats grass. If that original statement is true, what about the contrapositive of this sentence? And that would state, if it does not eat grass, then it's not a cow. This also would be a true sentence. Every example of something that does not eat grass, you couldn't point to it and say it is a cow with a counterexample. Again, if this is true, then the contrapositive must be true. So if you're given a statement such as P then Q, then you have the ability to rewrite that statement in this format, the contrapositive. So, as an exercise, what if you're given three statements? and you're asked to put them together using the law of syllogism, the transitive property. Well first, these three statements don't piece together, but if you consider the contrapositive of each statement, the contrapositive, then we can piece them together using three of these. If we start with W, where do we end? So, find W, W is here, and follow the chain of reasoning. If W uh, concludes to not S, and not S concludes to not R, and not R concludes to M, then we must say the law of syllogism concludes W to M. Some clarification on Lesson 2-2. Thank you.